you looking forward to uh, getting a chance to play left tackle uh, for the Titans? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, man. You know, it was doubted a lot. So I get a chance to uh, silence all the doubters and just go out there and give the team the uh, best chance to see. What gives you the confidence that you can make that transition to the left side? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I started at left. Uh, I was recruited to Alabama as a left. Um, and then I decided, you know, Evan Neal, he was there, um, you know, going to the Giants. And um, but before all that happened, you know, he he made the decision. He wanted to play left. I wasn't going to argue with a top 10 pick. You know, I don't want to uh, cause, you know, kind of malice within the room. Um, and, you know, he was a great tackle. So uh, I just decided to go to right. You know, I trained at right literally when I got to Alabama. I was never a right tackle um, in high school. I only played O-line for two years, and I was at left. I became the number two player in the country, number one in my position off of two seasons. Um, and, yeah, I mean, so I know, you know, just with hard work, dedication, you know, people tell me, you know, my uh, one of my closest friends' family tell me, Success is when preparation meets opportunity, and uh, I hold that near and dear to my heart. So I plan to, as soon as I step into the building, get get right to work. JC, well, how much of an idea did you have that you might land with the Titans before they drafted you? Um, it was pretty high. Um, my agent was telling me that uh, a lot of their GMs and uh, coaching staff was asking if the Chargers were, you know, interested in me, what they were planning on doing, um, if teams uh, were planning on trading up from um, who were past seven if they were interested in um, doing things like that. So um, even when, you know, the draft started uh, after the Cardinals picked uh, Marvin Harrison, uh, they had asked immediately, you know, um, let us know if the Chargers are talking to him right now. So uh, we had pretty high, high, high hopes and high confidence within them um, that they would make that decision to pull the trigger on me. What well, your, your take on Bill Callahan when you uh, met with the Titans here on your 30 visit and uh, what kind of interactions have you had with him? Yeah, I mean, I, I loved it. You know, uh, there's some of the technique I've never even heard about before just because uh, uh, he's such a legendary coach, you know. So just be able to be coached by him and pick his brain and just understand, you know, what type of guy he is on a personal level, but also understand, like, what um, environment that he's created with his um, um, technique and discipline. Um, and I, I loved it all. I was really intrigued by it all. We had a, you know, a two-hour discussion. You know, I talked to him about – guys at Alabama uh, where I was like saying, hey, like, you know, a guy did this move to me one time and, you know, it might have affected me, it might have not, but I want to know if I see it down the line, you know, what's going to happen? How do I do this? And we were just talking about like that. We were going over stuff like that. We were going over my plays, NFL plays. Uh, he was with the Browns at one point, so he was showing um, the Browns NFL film on that um, and just, you know, just everything. We sat and next thing you know, it was two hours that went by like it was nothing. So, uh, you know, we just had a great conversation. Uh, I just can't wait to get into the building and just – really dive deep into it all so yeah what did he tell you about the the move to left and what would go into that from from his end that was the uh expectation um he knew I was athletic enough to get the job done he told me um he knows that you know especially with his teaching that you know I could I, he knows the sky's the limit with me so um you know we're ready to go and uh yeah we're gonna hit the ground the ground running what's your familiarity with Will Levis him having played at Kentucky yeah, um, I heard about him a lot, you know, just going, especially um, after last season, I heard he was a great quarterback. And, um, you know, not having – we didn't play them, obviously, uh, two years ago. But um, I mean, as soon as, you know, the season was over with and I was hearing a lot of buzz around his name, um, I got to see, you know, what type of caliber player he is. And then, uh, you know, he drew a lot of attention, especially I think he had put, like, mayo in his coffee or something like that. So uh, that caught my eye. So, um, you know, when that happened, you know, I just made sure, like, um, not even the coffee situation, just in general, seeing when he was drafted with the Titans, I want to see how that would work um, out in that in that environment. And then, you know, seeing him come back, I forget what team it was, but I think they were down by, like, two touchdowns. And um, he was in the game, and he ended up coming back towards the end in the fourth quarter. You know, seeing the quarterback like that with the type of resilience, the type of team, the type of guy that can put the team together and lead the team into victory, you know, as a team that's – um. That's um, you know, ready to ready to be on the strive for greatness. So, how would you describe your your playing style, JC? And and you know, what are your top strengths when you're sort of at the top of your game? Yeah, um, just my playing style. You know, I have the ability to just do it all. You know, there's never something that my coach ever told me. Yeah, I don't know if you can do this. Um, or anything that came to you know it was just hard work, dedication, and commitment. Um, and being disciplined. So, um, you know, we went over everything together as far as what I need to do. Um, and I always got the job done. And, um, you know, I also one thing I feel like that's kind of undermined it a little bit in sports, especially is just my availability. Uh, I never missed a game. I've never missed practice, um, you know, ever in my life.
Um, you know, I've never had surgery. I think like the worst injury I've had was like a sprained ankle. You know, I, I broke my toe, but I played through that. So, um, you know, and you ask any coach, especially a um, more veteran coach, you know, coach with experience, he'll tell you the best ability is availability. You know, so I think right. I bring that to the table and, um, you know, just my just my intent and my mindset of what I want to do. And not only just being talking about it, just being about it. You know, that's why I went to Alabama uh, coming out of high school. And that's why I went to IMG while I was in high school, because I didn't just want to be another guy who was just all talk. I wanted to put myself against the best players um, in my environment on a day in and day out basis so I can have opportunities like this. Rand Carthon told us to be sure to shake your hand tomorrow. Uh, yeah. In the meantime, can you hold your hands up for? Yeah, I got, I got some, I got some pretty big hands. Yeah, eleven inch hands. Yeah, okay. I think uh, only I think one other guy, I think Marvin Harrison, beat me by like an eighth of an inch. I think his hands were eleven and one eight. So, but yeah, no, nah, um, yeah, I got some pretty big hands. <laughs> what does JC stand for? Uh Jerome, but I, I can't disclose the middle name. Only my mom calls me that. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty family uh, oriented and uh, sacred. What about the uh, uh, is is the nickname that that you gave yourself? Is that TK? Is that right? And can you explain explain that a little bit? Yeah. So uh, when I was at IMG, uh, my head coach or my positional coach was George Hagman. He played um, with the Eagles with Jeremiah Trotter, um, Junior's dad. You know, with them Buccaneers. One team that he played with though that stood out was uh, the Cowboys with Deion Sanders and. Um, Irvin and Larry Allen, all those guys when they were winning Super Bowls. And, you know, building that bond, every day going into meetings, you'd hear a coach on the phone with um Dion, and he'd always go, prime time, what's going on, baby? And, you know, uh, that just kind of stood out to me, not because, like, he was able to get in contact with them, even though it's prime time, but the fact that not only did they have a bond, prime time, Dion's standard is prime time. You know, when he's playing, it's prime time, you know? Uh, watching the – um trips to Canton, Ohio, the documentaries about all the players who end up going to the Hall of Fame, you know, you, you they have their name and then trip to Canton, you know, whatever it might be. Dion's was um, prime time to Canton. So the fact that, you know, that's how marketable and, and big of a deal his name is, I wanted to have a standard for that, like that for me, you know, uh, playing O-line, I was new to the position. So I told myself, I said, hey, like, this is what I want to do. I got to figure out what's my standard and who am I. And that was, um that was um uh, Trench King. So, you know, with, with dubbing myself Trench King, I know every time we broke it down and, you know, uh, Trench is on me, Trench is on three, one, two, three. And you say Trench is that it's always a mind, reminder in my head, like, hey, you're supposed to be the best guy in the trenches. You know, you can't you can't be the fastest receiver or, you know, be a quarterback who can throw it, but control your environment, control the trenches and dominate the trenches every chance you get. That's the standard of what we play to. So, Just Overall, JC, what's this day been like for you? And do you play with the grill, man? Oh no, absolutely not. Yeah, I just got it for the look, just for the aesthetics. Um, no, nah, but the day's been the day's been amazing. I mean, you know, we got in. Um, I think we got what day we get in last night or no, two nights ago. Uh, Tuesday, I got in like Tuesday at nine p.m. Um, uh, had you know breakfast and meetings with um with a couple of people here. Um, and then we had um um an event for the kids. It was just a charity event for the kids and then media right after that. And I really enjoyed that time, just being able to give back to the community. I remember being a little kid once and, um, you know, going to camps, you know, there's still kids out there who go to camps with high profile, high school, college, or even NFL players that hold them. And um, I know how much it meant to me. You know, I always keep the jerseys, the shirts they gave us, you know, I never would try to ruin it because it meant so much to me. And I told myself, if I ever get the chance to get back, I'll do it. So I was really excited to do that. And then, um, Today, you know, we got up, we had another meeting with the commissioner and um, then we had the red carpet event, at, you know, four o'clock or five o'clock, uh, just doing some more media stuff and, um, you know, getting to know the fans and all that stuff. And then by the time all that was over, it was about 7.30, 7.45. You know, we uh, did the national anthem and um, started the draft. So it's been a great process, man. I've enjoyed it all. Kayla, go ahead. Hey, JC, welcome to Nashville, man. Um. First of all, do you have like broadcasting in your past? Because you're a hell of a speaker. Yeah. Um, it's it's great listening to you. But in terms of that personality, when it comes to bringing that to the field, mm -hmm. how would you describe yourself as a player in that way? And do you kind of have that dog mentality on the line you can bring? Yeah, I mean, I like to take it a step further, you know. Uh, guys like Kobe, um, Israel Adesanya, guys like that nature, you know, they 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 state numerous times that, you know, unless you're willing, as Kobe stated one time, you know, he's willing to put in the work, uh, the work, knowing that he might not get the results he seeks. 
you know, and a lot of guys don't do that. You know, if I, if I were to tell you, hey, give me 10 hours of your day to do this, but the other person is only doing six, and I'm not guaranteeing you that you might have the spot, you might not be committed to it because of you don't you you don't know the results yet, you know. So Kobe's mindset that that spoke out to me because if, if that's what I can do without knowing the results, I know that I'll be a lot closer to my goals than they would just by the time that I'm putting in. And then something that Israel Adesanya said was, you know, when he's in the in the ring and he's fighting, you know, when a tough gets going and going gets tough, he tells himself he's willing to die about it, you know. And that spoke out to me. It gives me goosebumps even right now because you know I'm willing to die. On the field, you know, nothing stopping me from on the field. No, no broken toe. You know, I don't care. I had an intercostal strain one time. I rib, I couldn't breathe really, and um, we, we was just in practice and fall camp, and I still chose to, you know, thug it out and keep going. You know, so I mean, if I take my mind to that point where, you know, you know, obviously you're not gonna win every single rep, but if I take my mind to that point where, hey, like, I'm dying about this. This is what I'm doing. This is who I am, and this is what I was made for. I feel like God put me on this earth to be a football player and, and spread my treasures with my family and those around me and the rest of the communities, like I, I'm going way further than anybody else. And it, you're going to be, you're going to have to be willing to die for it to, to, to beat me. You know, if you can't go there, then you don't have a chance. So that's my mindset as far as that goes. Step past the dog. Most Lauren, go ahead. <laughs> Hey, JC, congratulations. Hi. Welcome to uh, Nashville, soon to be. Um, Thank you. We may have just touched on this with your answer to Kayla's question, but with you having played at the highest level your whole career, high school, college, and now being the seventh overall pick, what makes you primed for pressure? I mean, you, yeah, you just said it, you know. I mean, even before I went to IMG, uh, the team I played with was Captain Moore. I think they won, like, 10 or 12 state titles, I think maybe even 14. Um, right now, the coach is the most winningest coach in all of um, high school football in uh, the state of Wisconsin. Um, literally two years before I got there, they won state. Um, so, you know, I mean, they, they're they poised for greatness. So, you know, that standard there elevated me to put me on the pedestal to go to IMG. I was a defensive end. I was um, top 10 in the country. I was number three in my position. I was actually the eighth ranked defensive end at the time. So, you know, going to IMG, being on a national scale, now we're going against the best teams in the country. You know, Bryce Young at Modern Day, you know, Chris Braswell at other schools, Dallas Turner at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, guys who are in this draft or drafted number one overall. Those are the teams that we're facing in high school. So, um, you know, I mean, I took it as a challenge I love to be a part of and, you know, just stepping on that to being, having to switch over to eventually losing all my rankings and, you know, kind of in the gray area with the offers because now I'm an old lineman and the offers for D-line. So, uh, you know, taking that as a challenge to, hey, like, this is what I want to do. I'm going to have to buck up and, you know, grow up and, like, take this O-line stuff a lot more serious so I can get to college. And that was my junior year when I switched. You know, senior year, I was ranked number two in the country, number one in my position, and I made the choice to go to Alabama because I love being in that competitive environment to where now I'm playing with guys who are the number one pick and number three pick like Will Anderson and Dallas Turner. So, you know, it wasn't nothing, um, it wasn't nothing out of the ordinary for me. It's actually kind of weird you know, going against guys who aren't considered, you know, the best in their position or guys who don't bring that type of energy because I, I get frustrated because, you know, I feel like I rise to the level of my competition and I can't get better going against somebody that doesn't want to be better themselves. So, you know, I love being in situations where I can be in an environment now in the NFL where everybody wants to be the best and push themselves every single day.